Oh, it's not working because it's just a bloody shit here. Uh, Neil, Neil to shut it down. I have shut it down now. I will now come with this femur to the lower canvas and then I will smash it on the wall. <laughs> no, no, it's leave it like it is now if something works. Okay. Yeah, some, somehow it works now, the shit. So anyway, but we can now go to the next slide. So and here we have then a large tremolite dolomite marble yeah, from the Alps. In number B we have also a coarse grain tremolite marble in a nice basement. So in, in, in your limestones or in your former limestones and then in the metamorphic equivalent you will then find certain minerals and these certain minerals then are different from those which you have found or can find in the ultramavic rocks, yeah? So and therefore it is always important check at first if it is a silica saturated rock, is it a silica undersaturated rock, just in very simple things. So and if we have such marbles or tremolite marbles, then these tremolite marbles have maybe seen about 600 degrees Celsius. That is the, pre the temperature range where such a tremolite is formed. So here we have now a typical scene section. Uh, no, it's not a scene section. It is, a, it is just a, a macroscopic picture. And then we have here certain minerals which you can fi uh, find in such a metamorphosed limestone. Yes, we are calling this then a dolomite marble because we have a, a, a carbonate bearing mineral dolomite inside, then you have the calcite inside, that is a calcium carbonate, and you have, of course, as I told you just now, the tremolite inside, and you have a calc inside, yeah? So, and if we are forming, or if such a limestone undergoes metamorphism, what do you see is the dominant fluid? Is it water or CO2? Yes, we have the high concentration of uh, CO2 inside. So in the fluid, I mean, that, is provide, that provides then the SiO2. Yes, that is the SiO2 in solution. Then we have water. And from this water, we can make the tremolite. And we are removing our CO2 from the, from the water tides and calcite will be produced by such a reaction where we are forming tremolite, yeah? So the tide is also a water bearing mineral, that means OH is inside, is the tremolite as well. So and then in such a dolomite marble you have only very low concentration of quartz. So this um, Limestones or these metamorphosed limestones can be subdivided in different groups. We are using here just a triangle with calcium on, the, on, the, on this side, and we have magnesium here, and here we have quartz. So, for example, if we are looking for this dark colored or dark gray colored triangle here, then we have a rock containing of calcite, dolomite, and dioxide. Yeah, you know the dioxide that is the calcium, magnesium, clinopyroxene, and this one we are we have it also here in our calcium triangle, in our uh, in our um, 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 pyroxene triangle. So we are as if we, are, we can also subdivide this group. Then we have here one B, then we can have here also a, a marble containing calcite, phosphorite, and type, or we have the more quartz in the system, then we have here the calcite, the volastonite, the quartz, and the dioxide. Yeah? So and there you can then make
or you can make different different marbles. So in these different marbles, they can be formed maybe at the same temperature and under the same pressure conditions, but they are varying in mineral or in the minerals or in the volumetric composition of the minerals, and that depends only or that depends how many calcium, how many magnesium, and how many silica is available. Yeah. So if your limestone has originally more silica inside, then your metamorphose equivalent will then have also some or more silica inside. Yeah. If your limestone contains originally mainly of calcite and dolomite, then you will not form a quartz bearing rock. Yeah. So the chemistry from your prototype controls them very strongly, the chemistry from your metamorphosed rock. So, and of course, the concentration or the ratio between water and CO2, yeah? That's always the same game. So, and therefore we can write down different reactions. So we have here in the first columns, we have um, dolomite rich rock. So and then uh, these dolomite rich rocks, they are, these are then uh, always reactions which contains both CO2 and water. Yeah? So and then we have a quartz rich rock composition. There, the, 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 the reactions are strongly controlled by the occurrence of dolomite. Yeah? If the dolomite um, becomes consumed, then the reaction will stop. Yeah? I mean, you can always write down certain reaction. Here, for example, we have three dolomite, four quartz plus water. will give you talc plus three calcite plus three CO2. If your dolomite is then consumed, then this reaction, this talc and calcite reaction, uh, forming reaction will stop, yeah? So it is, depends always on the availability of your former minerals in your prototype, yeah? So and here we have, for example, in the dolomite rich rock composition, we have the upper limit of quartz. So these reactions are then strongly controlled on the availability of quartz, yeah? If every SiO2 is done, from your rock, then the reaction will stop, yeah? So therefore we can make such phase diagrams. So and here we have, uh, we can see how it depends on the XCO2. So at least in the time zones, uh, I mean you have there a lot of CO2 available, or let us say carbonate bearing minerals, so and therefore, if this calcite or dolomite is breaking down, then you have a lot of CO2 inside your fluid. So, but now the next question I have, we are going here with, with the pressure from 300 to 1000 millipascal. And here we have the temperature ranging from 300 to 800 degrees Celsius. So, and this is then a metamorphism which takes place, for example, uh, in, the, in the collision belt, yeah? So that means that it's not a conduct metamorphic event, because if we are talking about conduct metamorphic events, then we have, of course, very high temperature, but the pressure is low, yeah? So, and therefore, the authors made a certain diagrams. If we have here an X CO2 of 1, then we have here an X water of 1 as well, yeah? So, because it is always controlled by the ratio of, of CO2 and water, yeah? You know this by now. So, and if you have a high water concentration in the fluid, then we are forming other minerals compared to such a fluid where we have high CO2 concentration. 
So for example, here in this field and in this field, we are forming antigolite. Yeah, you know by now the antigolite that is the serpentine, that is the serpentine which is stable to temperatures of up to 600 degrees Celsius, and this antigolite can contain a lot of water. So when there is a carbonate mineral, we have here only the calcite. So, but if we are increasing then the XCO2, the, the, the XCO then we are forming the next carbonate bearing mineral that is the dolomite and the antigorite, you know by now, that has an OH4 group. And if we are, we are increasing the, X, the XCO2, that means your fluid contains the more CO2, then we are forming not longer an antigorite, we have that here as the water bearing mineral, the trevolite. Yeah? Because the tremolite has also only an OH2 group. So, and if you are going then to the field, then you can, I mean, you can, uh, you will recognize, for example, the dioxide, the calcite, and the dolomite, yeah? So, the dioxide is very easy to recognize because of its color, yeah, it's green. So, in the calcite, and you can also identify them easily in the field. Yeah, you can just use acid, yeah, because it will swizzle. So in the dolomite, you can also identify very easily because it looks nearly the same like the calcite, but the dolomite is not swizzling that much. So and if you have then such a mineral parachenis, then you know it has been formed at least if the water, if the fluid was water rich, then it starts to form here at 525 degrees Celsius. And if you are increasing the temperature, then you have a drastic change in your fluid composition. So that means. During metamorphism, you are forming, uh, if you are forming water, but here in minerals, if you are, if you are just starting here somewhere, yeah? You have a very water-rich fluid, then this, uh, the water will become sucked out of the fluid. You are forming then water bearing minerals, and relatively to this, your fluid will become then enriched in CO2, yeah? That is always this game. You are taking something out, and relatively to this, something else will increase, yeah? So uh, we did this uh, by, uh, by uh, describing a magma chamber, and now we are describing here just the fluid. And of course, if you have as a precursor limestone, then you, are, you have automatically a fluid which contains more CO2 as, for example, an ultramafic rock. And of course, your bulk rock chemistry, not the bulk rock chemistry, but your modal composition of your minerals will always change. So at, at temperatures of 200 degrees Celsius or a little bit more, we have such a Dolomite quartz, I like, or a dolomite quartz, calcite bearing limestone, yeah? So this is our starting material, yeah? So and this is the starting material which you, I have just seen last week or two weeks ago uh, at, at this huge output, yeah? So and now we are moving on this starting material in the subduction zone, or we are just running coral, into manual A. Yeah, then you have the position, then you are uh, to, uh, then your limestones becoming deformed, like the steamer now in a few seconds. Mm. Yep. So and therefore the dolomite becomes consumed here while we are increasing the temperature, the quartz becomes consumed, calcite will be formed, yeah? So but the bulk rock chemistry, yeah, that is the same. 
So you have only your minerals are changing, yeah? Some minerals reacting away, and some other minerals are formed. So and if the bulk of chemistry remains the same, then we are talking about isochemical reactions. Yeah, we are just consuming some minerals. Here, for example, the dolomite becomes consumed, and here we are forming more and more calcite. So, but here at this bar, here we are starting to form the tremolite, and here we are uh, forming the dioxide. Yeah. So, and your XCO2 in your in your during your uh, during your metamorphic reaction will will here increase. Yeah. So that means we are forming here the talc is a water bearing mineral, the tremolite is a water bearing mineral, and by forming all these water bearing minerals, of course, then the XCO2 will increase. So when it will increase here, I mean it started here at zero because there was no CO2 in the fluid, yeah? The CO2 was here bounded in the minerals like calcite because the calcite can, is a calcium carbonate, can contain CO2 and in the dolomite, yeah? But during metamorphism, your dolomite breaks down, we become consumed and that, uh, I mean it runs actually one by one, the dolomite breaks down and the XCO2 in the fluid will increase during this breaking down of the dolomite and additionally, your, your, um, the water from your fluid becomes removed by the formation of talc and tremolite. So, and if you are, of course, if you are running here to temperatures more than 800 degrees Celsius, something like here, then we do not have any, uh, any um, hydrous minerals or carbonate bearing minerals that we have here. Again, the forsterite, we have here the forsterite and we have here the dioxide. And what is this here? That is the calcite, yeah? Here again, such a diagram showing actually always the same. I mean, here we have then. Uh, Another bulk of chemistry, uh, here it's always uh, the, the author has written down the bulk of chemistry, and this is now a more silica rich bulk of chemistry. Here we have five silica, two magnesium, three calcium, and what else? Then we have uh, five carbon. If we are going back now to this one, then we have here only two silica, yeah? So, and if we have uh, more silica, rich bulk rock chemistry, then we are forming here instead of the forsterite like I have shown you before, here we are forming the uh, um, metamorphic rock containing of all astronite and quartz. So, but here we have then again our dioxide, calcite and quartz, and we have the different combination of the hydrous and the anhydrous minerals as well as the carbon acidic minerals, which are stable at different pressure and temperature conditions. So how now the next question is, how you can make money out of this? It's always very important. So, if you have a rock, a, lie, a metamorphosed limestone, which contains volastomite dioxide and quartz, then you cannot make that much money out of it, yeah? So because you have, if you are looking as an exploration geologist, then you are looking for minerals inside which you can sell, yeah? So these are all minerals or gemstones, yeah? So, but if we have... such a, a situation, then you can make money out of it, because that is a silica undersaturated and a metamorphosed limestone. So and in silica undersaturated and metamorphosed limestones, there are some gemstones, yeah? So in these uh, gemstones, this is um, the, 
The ruby, you know the ruby? Ruby? Ruby. These are reddish gemstones, yeah? And then you know the sapphire. And the sapphire is a blue gemstone, and the ruby and the sapphire have all those the same um, chemistry. So and then we have the corrupt. So in the corrupt that is according to the hardness scale, the I think it's number eight, yeah. Yes it is. So and if you are, have a, the ruby and the sapphire and the corundum, that is A and 203. So and this and the, I mean these are gemstones and the the, the corundum is just used for making sandpapers and such things. So and if you are in a silica saturated rock, as I have shown you in the other diagram, yeah, then you have then you have parts, and then you make a corundum plus SiO2, and then that is Al2 SiO5. So in the AL2 SiO5, you know this by now that is the kyanite, yeah? So, therefore, if you have a silica saturated metamorphosed limestones, you must not look for ruby and you must also not look for sapphire because they are not stable. So, but if you have um, And silica, under oversaturated limestone, yeah, if you have the silica oversaturated limestone, that is now the correct, correct then you will not find any uh, corundum or sapphire, but if it is silica undersaturated, then you will find them because then you will get them stable there, yeah. So yeah, then we skip it for now because I don't know. I will just try to get another beamer for next week.